All right, I got a lot to do ahead of me in today's video. I not only have to clean up the 180 gallon aquariums, but I want them fully set up. I want the lights on, I want the filters installed, I want the tanks filled, uh, I want the tanks scaped, and I want the fish in it. And by the end of this video, we will achieve that. However, first and foremost, I gotta clean these tanks up. If you don't notice the top tank, this was the back of the algae, or <laughs> the algae aquarium. This was the back of the saltwater aquarium at one point. I've shown you guys, geez, barkeeper's friend. I've shown you um, razor blades. I've shown you a tremendous amount of different methods on cleaning the glass of your aquarium. But if you ever come across something like this, I can wet it and maybe scrub at it for a bit. I could take razor blades and get at it. Or we could take uh, a little bit of parchment paper from Tamara's kitchen, crumple it up, check this out. We're gonna go up to it and watch this. This is ridiculous. I'm barely trying. I don't have water in the tank. I don't gotta get my hands wet. Uh, I don't have to do anything that I typically do. And once I remove it all, or once I've done this for a little bit, I'll have a little dust, but it mostly stays on the parchment paper to begin with. A little bit of elbow grease. Usually I put in a quarter inch of water so I can dip or I get a bucket of hot water and I clean it that way. I'm not doing that anymore. So now, even works on hard water stains up here. It's, it's just insane. Look over here, this is hard water stains. Boom, gone, 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 gone. Just absolutely incredible. This is all hard water stains. Tell me that isn't insane. Now, you guys love when I tell you uh, not only how to do something, but how and why it works. I don't know, but it does. <laughs> So in setting up this saltwater aquarium, there's not a whole lot to it. I'm going bare bottom and simply just going to move the rocks over, attempting to create at least some form of a cave system. Now I'm going to be abundantly honest, I never expected this macroalgae or all of these varieties to be this successful under the lighting that I've been using, which if you guys don't know, are just the basic do-it-yourself lights with household LED halogen style lighting these each are only seven watts. I'm using 21 watts to light the entire aquarium. The plan is simple. I'm going to continue to expand this rock work until it reaches six feet. We currently have approximately three and a half to four feet of this macro algae in the tank. And I gotta say, it's not gonna take much to continue to propagate. I'm just gonna rip a little piece off, glue it to a new rock, let that grow and continue. Similar to what you do with planted tanks because after all, this is a planted saltwater aquarium. Moving the fish in, of course, were very simple. I just grabbed them and kind of tossed them in. It's not that big of a deal, uh, especially with moving venom and venomous fish. Of course, we're not gonna touch the net with our hands. We're simply just going to move it over and uh, get it out of the net. Same with the puffer fish um, who ate uh, shortly before we moved them over because I thought that these guys won't eat for at least a couple days once they're in their new tank. Now that everybody's in though, lighting is on, filtration is hooked up, which we're, we're gonna go over here in a moment. This tank looks incredibly bare. I gotta admit, it does. It does look incredibly bare, but incredibly elegant and simple. I truly cannot wait to have more rock. I don't know if we're gonna have more rock, but I definitely want the, the uh, macroalgae to grow a little bit taller. They are kind of looking like they're starting to max out a bit. Maybe we'll be able to pick up some different types, but we'll kind of look at um, them close up. See if you guys recognize any of these. This one's more like a fern. I don't have a lot of that. It just kind of popped up randomly in the tank, but I got to admit, it's one of my favorite. And then we got this red stuff that uh, everybody has in their sumps. Just a fantastic, uh, macroalgae that just gobbles up nitrates in the tank. Then we have like the seaweed stuff, uh, which is probably my favorite. Reminds me of Valenceria in the planted aquarium. And if, believe it or not, like you can kind of see, they send out runners. And then we have some, whatever that one is. I have no clue what any of these are called, but now I'm an expert on growing them. And you know what my expertise is? Is have a dirty tank. <laughs> and let them grow. It's algae. They're sucking out nutrients out of the water and doing a fantastic job at it. Now, I also want you to take a really close look at the flow in the tank. This has been key to this aquarium. Uh, of course, we're looking for the fish right now. Um, Dwight's just under there. 
Uh, and then we've got a, uh, one of the lionfish there. And where's the big one? Oh, he's under there. And there's actually a shrimp in there. Um, he's over there. Uh, the shrimp got in with the, uh, with the plants. Where is he? Yeah, he's over there. You can kind of see his tail and stuff. Anyways, look at the plants and what they're doing. They're all kind of undulating and moving. I need this. I found that was key with this macroalgae is keep the flow moving around it. Less flow or more flow means less of the obnoxious algae, the gross stuff we don't want. And this stuff will just grow like a weed because technically in the wild it is a weed isn't it notice though there's no equipment besides over in this corner and how are we filtering it again like a freshwater aquarium we've got a large canister filter over here with the output uh giving us some surface movement as well as uh the input at the bottom here uh, and then i have a long uh wave maker that's kind of blowing the water around but softly one of the outputs is blowing along the wall here and then the other output you can kind of see it's pointing towards us right now so i'm kind of creating this little whirl whirlwind and i wish there was more dust on the ground over here or somewhere and you can kind of see it swirling i guess you can kind of see what happens up here it makes its way all the way across the tank i this is what i want uh right now uh well i think later on in the video that the lionfish and stuff will come out uh right now they're just kind of like hiding from me because I just turned on the bright lights above us and blah, 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 blah. Plus we only moved them last night. Uh, the water is crystal clear besides a few particles. Um, but I want to build a case that hides the canister and goes above it as well. So I can have stuff on top of it because I want to put plants up there, I think. But uh, I'm also thinking about building some sort of a protein skimmer because I don't really want to do water changes on a saltwater tank besides topping it up. Of course, when we have evaporation in a saltwater tank, that's what we have to do. We can't add in more salt water, otherwise the salinity keeps rising up and up and up. I want to add in fresh water and just kind of top it off. So I might even have a top off system back there, kind of push the canister out of the way because we do have a two by two foot space back there. It is a very generous uh, amount of area, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, and we'll rig something up there. The other thing we kind of need to talk about is how I mix the salt in the first place. I moved some of the salt, I pumped it from uh, the 70 gallon that they were in, just because it does have some nitrates and whatever in it, and I want to continuously feed the plants. I don't want them to have a big die off, which I'm a little worried because this tank has gone essentially through, um, at, you know, a 50% water change. But basically I, I filled this tank up with about 60% uh, fresh water. I dumped in enough salt, put in some wave makers to mix it all up and uh, got it to the proper salinity. And what I'm sh shooting for in a fish only system a lot of the times is 1.023 to 1.026 salinity, 26 being up on the uh, higher end, but I'm, I'm still comfortable in that range and the fish would be as well. Uh, there is going to be a background going on this aquarium, and I think you guys are going to be excited for that. I still got to paint the walls and stuff, but right now, the next thing is I got to get the discus tank hooked up, and uh, it's already draining over here, uh, and I've already began to hook up the filtration. We, of course, have uh, a couple of wave makers down in the corners. Uh, one's kind of, basically, I'm pointing it at the wood structure that's going to have the plants on it, essentially making sure no algae grows on it because that's a that's actually a problem that that tank has at times um and then of course the another big canister goes right over here oh and people are asking about these these trims these are just trims they offer no structural integrity to the tank this is the brace it's glass but these based off this design of aquarium sometimes they do offer structural integrity but in this case they do not and uh they just fell off eventually um apparently the company that built these tanks mentioned that they used the wrong silicone on the trim and they were just kind of falling off. I don't care. I'll clean the silicone up and glue them on myself. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but the canister, another big one over here. How did I get it back there? I just basically picked it up and put it back. How will I clean it? Very simple. I'll open up the valve at the bottom, drain the water, and I'm going to have to take the top off. It'll be obnoxious to do, but it's kind of what I have to do in order to have this set up. I'm okay with it. Obviously, I got to clean up the cables and make it more tidy over here. But for the most part, uh, well, the saltwater tank is done and it's going to be okay for, you know, upwards of a week or two uh, before I paint the stand, before I continue to build things, because I do got to move on. Obviously, I got to get the discus doing, we're going to do that right now, but then I got to get these two tanks out of the way. And then I got to build a stand for this, get that up on the stand. Then I got to build another desk, eight foot long desk. It's going to look absolutely amazing. And uh, it's coming along rather quickly. 
Notice that this tank is only six feet long, but it comes out eight feet from the wall. I don't, uh, I think I'm gonna cover this side up uh, with some sort of uh, some sort of wood and paint it. And I, I don't know if I'm, I might even go white uh, stands, but we'll see uh, because uh, everything else is also going to come out eight feet. The desk is going to come out eight feet. Obviously, the 375 is eight feet. So everything's going to come out as far as that. And we'll have plenty of room. I'm moving the fridge as well. We're going to have a wide open space. This looks so crowded right now and obnoxious to me. Um, you know, and I'm tripping over wires and hoses and whatnot. So I got to get all this cleaned up and get all of these moved. But that's what we're going to do now which is move these darn discus. And I think we're gonna have to start off with by moving the wood. Well, that was moving the saltwater aquarium, which was a breeze, entirely simple and easy. However, when it came to doing the discus tank, I was faced with some challenges, some unexpected problems, and things that kind of just, uh, overall were just unexpected. And that video went on for quite some time. It's gonna take me a while to edit it down uh to what's watchable uh so for today i'm just going to show you the saltwater aquarium but of course uh the discus tank will come out likely next and again still so much to do so many things you guys haven't seen uh but all of it's coming out so if you're not subscribed to this channel yet make sure you do or you're gonna miss it i'm standing in the new location right now and it's absolutely phenomenal you guys are gonna love it